Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruits, yielding its fruit in each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits and of the prophets, has sent his angels to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard them and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. And he, but he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy in this book, for the time is near. Let the evil lure still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be so be beholden. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so they may have the right to the tree of life, that they may enter the city by the gates, outside of the dogs and the sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and the murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of Jacob, the bright morning star. The Spirit and the Bible say, the Spirit and the Bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plague described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God will take away his share of the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord.
that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I have made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus, whom you have sent. 
I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory I had with you before the world existed. And then Jesus prays for his little band of disciples, Peter and Andrew and the rest. He prays that they would remain united in the faith that he had taught them and that they would carry these teachings forward to those who have not yet heard the faith. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. They, yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I'm praying for them. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may sanctify the truth. And as we continue to listen, we see that this conversation includes us. Our text begins with that third part of Jesus' prayer. Incredibly, deep within his passion, with the cross approaching, with the morning's dawn, Jesus takes time to pray also for those people who would come to faith in the future. Those who would be the recipients of the gospel that was yet to be preached to them. His prayer is that his truth, which he already taught to the disciples, would also be taught to the world. The world, that includes us. Jesus has an eye on us even 2,000 years before we ever heard a word. Because there are faithful people through the years who have used the word, the sacraments, the means of grace in order for that faith to reach our ears. That means of grace may have been a Bible story told by your mother or read to you by your mother. We are included in Jesus' prayer because we too are baptized into his name, his family. Now, Jesus encourages us to eavesdrop. We're interested in Jesus' words. He is praying to the Father about us. What was it that brought us into this divine conversation? We're included in Jesus' prayer because of his incredible, unfathomable, eternal love for each and every one of us. This love is rooted in the perfect love within the Godhead. Love is the way Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have always interacted. And this love, before the foundation of the world, is extended by God's grace to Jesus' earthly disciples, regardless of era. This love includes you and me as Christian disciples. As wonderful as that sounds, that can make us uncomfortable. Because if we are disciples, we have to act. We have to use our effort and our dollars and our willingness to let the Word of God change people. What will it be like to have people who are not German fill our pews? Jesus is praying that they come to believe in him and become one with us as Jesus and the Father are one. This love is something we cannot know to the fullest extent. Because all of us are self-centered. It's always me first. And when we pray, we usually pray for our needs, and our wants, and our wishes. How often do our prayers include 
all of those in the world for whom Jesus prays. Although we cannot comprehend the breadth and depth of Jesus' love, we do believe it. And we love hearing Jesus talk about it. It is that love that gave Jesus the desire, the will, to accomplish the salvation of all humanity. Nothing could or would stop him from accomplishing it. The power of the devil couldn't stop it. The magnitude of our sins was not too great. The God man Jesus, who we overhear praying to the Father, would pay the price of the sins of all in the next agonizing hours. He would die and then rise again three days later, and the result would be the redemption of all of those for whom he prayed. Jesus' work includes us and all people for all time and beyond. It's rooted in eternity. It endures into eternity. It endures for all eternity. Did you hear it? Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory. If you heard it, you did a lot better than me for years. It wasn't until a fellow brother pastor preached a funeral sermon that I finally heard it. Jesus is praying for you and for me to leave this life and be with him for the rest of your eternal life. And no matter what you pray for your loved ones or for yourself about being all better and being in this life forever, at one day, God the Father says no to your prayer and says yes to Jesus' prayer. And we will see his glory. Jesus encourages us to eavesdrop on this. Jesus is praying. The righteous Father will judge all people at the proper time. And those who reject Christ right now, who reject his work, who think it's irrelevant or not needed, are dead in their sins. And we need to hear that. Because Jesus is praying for them right now. Jesus is praying that his name will go to every one of them. He desires that no one be lost, but that all would come to them. You and I, who have come to repentance and faith and received the forgiveness of sins, we're the ones who now are gathered to work with Christ Jesus in the church so that others who aren't there will be gathered into his name. This is more than agreeing that our church should be involved in outreach. This is each one of us taking time to talk to our friend, our friend who does not attend church, who does not know Jesus, and offer to bring that friend to Bible study and divine service. In that forgiveness of sins, is eternal life to dwell with God in heaven and to see his face. We have a foretaste of that glory every time we gather together and receive his gifts through word and suffering. The will of God, motivated by his eternal love, brings this gift to us and he wants to bring that gift to so many others. So as we begin eavesdropping on Jesus in prayer to his Father, we see that each one of us is included among those he prays for. In fact, 
There was never any real need to eat God because Jesus wants us to hear his prayer so that we have all the more confidence that our place is by his side in ministry today and in heaven forever. All of that is secured. Here on earth, we will share in his love as we labor, even as we suffer in his name. And then in heaven, we will share his eternal love and glory and will reign with him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. And let us rise and confess our faith to the words of the Nazi Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join together in the prayer of the church. O righteous Father, your Son obeyed your holy will for the sake of our salvation. Through your Spirit, give your church on earth unity of faith, that the world may know that you sent your Son to rescue us from sin death and the power of the devil. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have instituted holy baptism as a saving flood, a washing of rebirth and renewal. Grant that many would be washed in the river that flows from the heavenly city and be brought through her gates into the communion of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the church, you have sustained your people through the ages by the apostles' witness to the death and resurrection of your Son. Raise up from among us faithful pastors in every age. Keep our missionaries, pastors, and overseers faithful to you in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, be with our pastor-elect, Reverend Brandon Ross and his family, as he deliberates our call as your servant at Holy Cross. Grant us humility and move us to prayer, empowered by the Holy Spirit in this time of waiting, knowing that we are only your vessels in this call to service. Be with the members of Faith Lutheran Church where Pastor Ross currently serves. Give them and us peace in praying your will be done through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have placed us in communities and families where we are nurtured and grow in the knowledge of your word and love of you. We intercede for the families of the victims of violent death this past week in our schools and those who have died in the womb. May we be faithful teachers of that word to our children and those not yet of the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. 
Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to our minds the sacrifices of all those who served faithfully even into death in the protection of our freedom and then in defense of our land. Be with all those in this day who suffered the terror of unjust wars. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you have seated Christ at your right hand for our deliverance. Remember all who are afflicted with illness and injury. We pray especially for Tiffany, Heather, Caleb, Betty, and Nikki, and all those unnamed in our thoughts. Give them health and strength according to your will. Sustain them in faith, knowing that for Jesus' sake, you will raise them in glory on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you have instituted and given your sacrament for the faithful to receive the very body and blood of your Son for their forgiveness, life, and salvation. Grant us all pure hearts to receive this gift worthily, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we praise and remember the faithful who went before us, now resting from their labors. Grant that we may follow in faith where they have led the way, and at length be brought with them into your everlasting light and life to see you face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you
just eavesdropping. Thank you.